In this session, we'll come back to what we did in the last one, namely proving equational properties of programs using structural induction. We will practice the newly learned techniques in a somewhat larger proof. For a more difficult example, let's consider the reverse function. We pick its inefficient definition here because it's more amenable to equational proofs. So, as defining clauses, we would have nil reverses nil, and x followed by xs reverse is the reversal of the list xs followed by the element x. These two equations are, as we know, equivalent to the more efficient version of fault left, and they are closer to what we want to prove. So we pick them, which of course does not prevent us from using at runtime the more efficient definition of reverse. So what we would like to do is prove the proposition that xs reverse dot reverse is xs. So to prove this, it's an obvious induction on the list xs. The base case is really easy nil reverse reverse is the same thing as nil reverse by the first law of reverse which says that nil dot reverse is nil and then we again invoke the first law to show that that expression now is the same as nil which establishes the proposition let's look at the induction step so here we would have x followed by xs and then a double reverse what can we do with that well we can apply the second clause of reverse, which would mean that this expression here would can be rewritten to the right hand side, xs dot reverse followed by x. And then we have a reverse on both sides here. What else can, can we do? Well, there doesn't seem to be anything obvious. So let's turn to the right hand side. The right hand side would read simply x followed by xs. So what can we do with that? But well, one thing we could do is apply the induction hypothesis, which says that uh, the list xs is the same as the list xs reverse reverse. So then we are left with x followed by xs reverse reverse. And again, there's not much we can do anymore to this side here. So both sides, unfortunately, have simplified to different expressions. This expression here and the, that expression there. So we still need to show that the two sides are the same and proving it directly by induction doesn't work as we have seen. What we can try instead is we can generalize this equation. So the idea is that instead of just saying xs to dot reverse here and here, we replace that with an arbitrary list ys. So our new lemma that we want to prove is for that for any list ys, ys followed by x reverse is the same as x followed by ys dot reverse. And to prove that equation, we can use a second induction argument, this time on the list ys. So let's try that. So let's look at the base case first. So here ys equals nil. And the equation we want to show is that nil followed by x dot reverse is the same as x followed by nil dot reverse. That's the instantiation of the lemma that we want to show here. So what could we do with the left hand side here? Well, by the first clause of plus plus, nil is a left unit, so this thing simply simplifies to list of x dot reverse. Then the next step would be to expand what list of x is. So list of x, as we know by its definition, is x followed by nil. In the next step then we would invoke the second clause of reverse to arrive at this expression here. Well actually there's one intermediate step that we have to do here. So by the second clause of reverse what would we get? We would get um, the list that follows the head element first. So that would be nil dot reverse followed by list of x. And now we can simplify nil dot reverse by the first clause of reverse is just nil, whereas list of x expands to x followed by nil. So that's how we arrive at this expression here. Now what we can do here is uh, we can again invoke the first clause of plus plus to say nil is a left unit and we're just left with x followed by nil. There's one more step to do. Uh, again, by the first clause of reverse, we know that nil dot reverse 
is nil. So we've just now used this equation backwards from going from nil to nil dot reverse. And that's the right hand side that we want to show here. So we get equality here and the base case is established. Let's look at the inductive step. What we need to do here is show that y followed by ys, that's our list, followed by x reverse is the same as x followed by then y followed by ys reversed. So let's see how we would go about that. Uh, let's work on the left hand side here. First thing we can do is we can pull out the y from its binding with the list ys using the second clause of concat. So we have the y uh, as a head element here and then the list ys followed by list of x. The next thing we can do is we can invoke the law of reverse which says well reverse of a list that starts with y is the same as reversal of the rest of the list here and the y becomes the last element of the new list. The next thing we can do is apply the induction hypothesis because we see here that the expression y as followed by list x reverse that's the left hand side of the equation with just the list y s and we can assume that it, that that equation holds. So we can rewrite it to the right hand side of the equation which would be x followed by y s dot reverse. Now we can apply the first clause of plus plus to pull out the x element and we can apply the second clause of reverse to establish that y followed by y s reverse is the same as y s reverse followed by a list of y. And again we have equality here. So the auxiliary equation is established and because the auxiliary equation was the last thing we needed to prove the main proposition that xs reverse if reverse is xs, we are done. So the proof methodology you have seen here worked in essentially three steps. Uh, we could apply a defining equation, either of reverse or of concat, and we could apply it in two different ways. So what you've seen here, for instance, uh, going from here to here, that was we uh, invoked the equation left to right. Um, the, that was the second clause of plus plus, which says plus plus on a list uh, with a head element y is the same thing as uh, a list that starts with y. So we can pull out the y. And that step is called typically an unfold step. Uh, the other uh, equational reasoning step was uh, what you've seen here in the last step where we have applied an equation backwards. The equation for reverse read y followed by ys reverse is ys reverse followed by list of y. And that is called a fold step. So what's important here is that these equations uh, are real equations in the mathematical sense. They can be applied both, way, both ways, they're commutative. Um, and the last step that we typically do in an, a proof like that is apply the induction hypothesis. So the proof method that we've seen is sometimes called the fold-unfold method. for equational proofs of functional programs. So we finished the session with an exercise which is a bit more involved than the previous ones and uh, it's open-ended so I won't give you a solution immediately. So what I want you to do is uh, prove another law that's useful uh, that relates map uh, and concatenation. So the law says that essentially if, uh, a map distributes over concat for any lists x s y s and function f, x s followed by y s and then map the function is the same thing as mapping the function over x s, mapping it over y s and concatenating the results. What you need for the proofs is uh, the clauses of plus plus that you've seen as well as two clauses for maps that you see here. So again they derive directly from the definition of map. First clause says to map a function over the empty list you would get the empty list. The second clause says that to map a function over a list consisting of x followed by xs, what you get is f applied to the head element x followed by the result of mapping f over the rest of